Hi everyone, in this video we'll take a look at how you can install Apache Zeppelin on Ubuntu. Apache Zeppelin is a very powerful uh, multi-purpose notebook environment uh, for different styles of uh, data analytics, uh, kind of like workflows. So if you're uh, a data scientist, a data analyst, or, or even business users and uh, even data engineers, if you wanted to um, perform different um, types of uh, workflows within data analysis that comprises of uh, data ingestion, uh, analyzing the data, um, data discovery, visualization, and sharing these insights with other users, uh, then Apache Zeppelin is a very powerful environment. Uh, also, it's um, very handy an environment if you are trying to uh, learn um, Spark, Apache Spark, uh, Spark SQL, uh, working with um, different programming languages like Scala, uh, Python, and various others, you'll find Apache Zeppelin uh, quite a handy tool at your disposal. Uh, so again, in this video, we'll take a look at how you can install Apache Zeppelin through uh, four simple steps. So one, we'll download and extract the required binaries. Um, two, we'll uh, s make sure that uh, the required environment variables, that's uh, Spark Home and Java Home, have been set up. And uh, then we'll uh, update the required config files uh, for Apache Zeppelin. And then finally, we'll start the daemon and um, take a look at Apache Zeppelin in action. So that's really the agenda for this video. So it shouldn't take too long. So step one is um, go ahead and download uh, Apache Zeppelin. So head over to zeppelin.apache.org. Uh, click on downloads and uh, you can download the binary package. Uh, you can of course build it from source, but this demo covers building it from the binary package. Uh, fairly straightforward option. Uh, so go ahead and uh, click download. Um, on my machine, I've downloaded um, uh, Zeppelin and Advance and extracted to a folder of your choice. Uh, in my case, I've uh, copied it over, uh, extracted it over to my home directory. Uh, once you've extracted it, um, that's uh, step two. Um, let's um, let's make sure that you have the required um, uh, Spark Home and Java Home uh, set up. Uh, so in my case, uh, I've got an environment here where uh, Spark's already been installed. So if you've not installed Apache Spark uh, on your machine, head over to one of my previous videos. Uh, it walks you through how you can install Spark. And once you've installed Spark, uh, make sure that you set up the Spark Home and Java Home in your Bash RC. So, uh, so let's head over to Bash RC. Oops, that was caps. Uh, so make sure that you have um, the required variable set up. So in my case, I've already um, got the setup, but if you haven't already done so, make sure that you have uh, Spark Home and Java Home um, set up in your Bash RC. And once you have uh, set it up, make sure that uh, you run Bash RC. Oops, I'll be Yep, make sure that it's run. Uh, otherwise, uh, the changes that you've made will not uh, take effect. Um, post that, let's, um, let's uh, set up the required files for Zeppelin. Uh, so head over to the folder that you've extracted, uh, Apache Zeppelin. Go to the con folder, and here you'll find uh, two templates files. Uh, create a copy of both of these template files. Um, best practice, don't, don't touch those files, uh, just create a copy and uh, within this file here so let's uh, rename that and get rid of the template okay and uh, make sure that uh, we need to put the java home and the spark home here so if i head back to my console uh, let's see let me make sure i have that copied spark home yeah close that and head over here and just copy both the spark home and the java home and that's about it for this file um, the configuration file so second open copy 
I think I copied that by mistake. Let me get rid of that one and instead I need to copy this one here. Alright, so this is the site.xml and let's rename that. Oops, cancel. Let me open that with an editor. So the the reason we are trying to update this uh, property file is um, particularly when you're working with um, Spark, um, this might be a familiar um, port number that you might be aware of. It's uh, uh, you uh, you have the master node running. So instead of 8080 or 8081, we'll change it to a default uh, different port number. So I'm going to set it to port 1890 uh, so that it does not interfere with um, any of the Apache Spark URL. So I've changed it to 8090, but feel free to use a different port number of your choice uh, as long as it does not interfere with uh, any of the other software that's running on your machine. All right, so um, that's it for configuration. So in our steps here, we have completed step one, two, and three. Uh, the final step is to actually just run Apache Zeppelin. Um, so opening a new console here. So let's go to Zeppelin. So bin, and it was, uh, here we have Zeppelin daemon. So uh, I'll just copy that here. So get rid of that, easier for me. All right, so we are running the daemon. The first time when you run it um, behind the scene, it uh, creates the folder for log and uh, creates a run folder. So that should happen in the background and it's uh, giving you a status that uh, Zeppelin's already uh, is all set to go. So the next thing is, uh, again, you may remember from the configuration here, um, where was that? Yeah, that's this configuration that uh, the default port is uh, set to 1890. So um, in your, I mean, I've changed it to 1890. So in your browser, set local host, oops, local host 1890. And uh, this is the first time we are running a Apache Zeppelin, but as you can see, it's, um, it's showing a status of uh, connected. So that's a good sign. And um, by default, it creates um, uh, a notebook for you. Um, so head over to that notebook. And uh, since this is the very first time that um, you're running uh, Zeppelin, uh, make sure that when you open Zeppelin, uh, the first notebook that you create, make sure that um, uh, you save the interpreter list here. So here you can see these are all the interpreters and make sure you click on save here. Otherwise, um, none of your uh, examples uh, will load. Um, I'll cover the details of uh, what you can do with uh, Zeppelin in a different video. This video is primarily intended to cover um, uh, the installation itself, but um, we'll make sure that uh, it's it's working properly. So let's um, let's click on um, run for a few of these. So in the first case, it's loading data from uh, an S3 store and uh, saving that as a temporary table, uh, registering it as a temporary table. So let's just wait for that to run. Okay, so that's completed. And now we have downloaded the sample data set and registered as a, a temporary table. Now we can uh, run the other examples. Uh, the simpler option would have been for me to just go over here at the very top and uh, run all all the paragraphs here, but I've manually gone ahead and run each of these individually. So as you can see, we have all um, set up now. So just ensure that um, we can run um, some commands here, make uh, use of Spark SQL uh, to execute um, the, the commands in the sample uh, tutorial notebook. So that covers it for this quick video to uh, install uh, Zeppelin. Uh, hope you like this video. Do subscribe for future updates. Thanks everyone for watching.